So, in today's Dragon Ball Z Dokken Battle video, I'm going to be going over all the free-to-play LRs that are currently in the game and ranking them. And big, big shout-out to Truth and Kabuki for helping me make this list. So, if you don't agree with some of the choices that we technically made here, then, you know, go, go, go over to their Twitters and let them know, yeah? <laughs> Just let them know, but regardless, that's a joke, kind of. Um, so, today, we are going to be starting off with the Piccolo. And... When it comes to the Piccolo, he is just extremely outdated. And because we are currently in a meta where defensive boosts don't necessarily matter that much, it kind of takes away from his usefulness, in a sense. And before, people would make the excuse that, including myself, of course, that he was good because of the links that he shares with LR Gohan. But now, because realistically, you're never going to you know, gonna be running the LR Piccolo on an optimal team. And additionally, he isn't even on a category. So he doesn't exactly have that many uses, which kind of puts him at the bottom of this list, you know, list, which is a bit of a shame, considering how it's such a cool thing to have a free unit that you can obtain from the World Tournament. It gave you more incentive to play that mode to obtain this, you know, pretty cool legendary rare. Bit of a shame that the increase that he provides defensively isn't a percentage one, because that would be way better. Unfortunately, we are stuck with a flat-out defensive increase. Of course, he gives the 5,000 to all allies, and he his own defense can get pretty high, of course, but it just doesn't help out that much unless you're maybe taking on Super Battle Road, and I'm pretty certain that in that mode, despite getting such a significant defensive increase, it's not going to be enough to actually be able to tank the majority of the hits regardless. But even so, he comes in in the number 11 spot, if I'm not mistaken, so he is right at the bottom, and reason... Uh, just to reiterate on the point I made earlier about him sharing certain links with LR Gohan. Of course, he has Shocking Speed, um, Legendary Power, and I believe that is it for the most part. The First Awakened, Gohan does not have that. Can you imagine if Gohan had, had the First Awakened? 25% attack link. But yeah, for the most part, the reason why he links up so well with Gohan is because of Shocking Speed and Legendary Power. And of course, Piccolo comes in in the number. 11 spots. Now, when we move on to number 10 spots, the Gohan from the very start just seems super underwhelming. And especially for the difficulty that it is Super Battle Road. Because Super Battle Road, even now, is still relatively hard apart from maybe maybe intelligence and physical just because of LR Gogeta and Vegito, of course. Because they just make it a whole lot easier. Even if you don't have them yourself, just taking a friend is going to make the whole situation a whole lot easier for your entire team is decent enough and his leader skill is honestly solid but i don't think it's that big of a factor because we have much better leader skills that it, it's a part of the card that is just kind of irrelevant and if you were to take him as a lead you aren't going to be getting that much health attack and defense anyway it's just better for you to run a different lead like vegito blue you know super saiyan rise goku black even just the uh, regular 70 percent leads are probably going to be better than this because of what they provide in terms of their own abilities. Because the Gohan himself, leader skill aside, he is not that great of a unit. He does cause colossal damage, cause mega colossal as well. He gets a 10,000 defensive increase at the start of the turn. But to really get the most out of him when it comes to his offensive abilities, you have to be below 50% of your health, which is extremely hard on a hybrid Saiyan team. And then if we move on to the Link set, his Link set also isn't very good because... It, he just isn't going to be linking up with anyone, especially on a hybrid Saiyan team. He doesn't have shocking speed for one. And when it comes to a physical team, it's even worse. Because no one has... Like, he won't have prepared for battle. You know, he won't have the um, over and flash thing. You know, small things like that, that are, you know, inevitably going to make a massive difference. He does have the Innocence, which is a nice attack link. But far from that, it's not going to be that common at all. I mean, Z Fighters, you could share with a few units on the... You know, on hybrid Saiyan T, maybe even the Saiyan lineage. But for the most part, he is an extremely underwhelming unit. Especially, like I said, considering how difficult that Super Battle Road mode is. So, Gohan comes in the number 10 spot. Again, his leader skill is decent. So, if you want to run a team with this particular leader skill, if you don't have the 1008 Goku, you can go ahead and do so. But it's not the greatest thing to run by any means. Now, we have the LR Goku. The very first legendary rare and he did not age well at all and it, it's for most cards in the game the more that the game progresses the more like certain units can get left behind his leader skill was at the time one of the best leader skills in the game if not the best leader skill and of course he was the hardest hitter in the game as well colossal damage mega colossal damage gives a 30 percent attack increase to all of your allies now 
where the problem lies is the fact that he gets a flat out attack and defensive increase and it's only when you are facing one enemy so it's not that great if you're trying to take on super battle road for one and because the majority of the tech type team is over and flash orientated it's just not there is no spot for him again i'm always going to be talking from an optimal standpoint just for the sake of argument but if i go over to i think that's probably the best oh yeah it's actually gonna be bad never mind but if you want to uh, take a look at the best possible tech type team of course you have super saiyan 3 goku you have elos super saiyan 3 goku you have vegito blue you have uh who am i thinking of here super saiyan 4 gogeta just so many units with that over and flash thing I mean, even in a tn with that over and flash thing and he provides the free key as well so the majority of that team is going to be compiled of pardon me over in the flash unit so goku doesn't really have a spot there despite the absolutely incredible lr campaign he just doesn't have a spot there and because they are trying to make the events harder and harder there is even a situation where the super saiyan bardock which of course is goku's best partner won't be able to fulfill uh, basically, he won't be able to meet the best of his expectations because of how the events are. Because now, going into some of these newer events, you can't see your super attacks on the very last stage, which of course is going to be the hardest stage. So instantly, you are taking away one of Bardock's main abilities, which was the ceiling of super attacks. He still provides a ton of orbs for LR Goku. Don't you know? Don't take me wrong. But when it comes to a tech type team, he just isn't going to be doing much there, and even on super battle road because he is only getting that attack and defensive increase when facing one enemy which isn't going to happen up until you know the very end when you have like one enemy left he just doesn't have as many uses as he used to which is a bit of a shame because you know as the first legendary rare you would have liked to see him you know progress relatively well and that grind was just absolutely terrible when he came out but you know what he still has a place in my heart goku is still the guy he still has an incredible card nonetheless the very first legendary rare it's just a bit of a shame that he didn't progress the way that some of the other cards did but who knows maybe in the future he will receive an extreme z awakening because t is honestly in need of it so goku comes in the ninth spot just to make sure eight seven six five four three yeah so the ninth spot now number eight we have the LR Androids, and initially, the Goku definitely was better, but ultimately, what puts the Androids above is the fact that they just have more usefulness in more areas, I feel. And to be honest, it comes down to the fact that the main lead for Extreme Agility is an Android, and obviously, you have other factors like the Extreme Agility you know, group in general just doesn't have that many great units there, so they are always going to have a spot there for the most part. Unless they you know, just decide to release a ton of of extreme agility cards but leader skill straight away is terrible i mean it was the first leader skill to have anything like this well to give the four key just to reiterate but uh, colossal damage mega colossal damage fifteen thousand attack increase when performing a super attack so it, it's interesting to see how the very first lrs just had that flat out attack increase and to be fair even some of the most recent ones have those flat out boosts anyway but i feel like it kind of got to the point where they stopped caring about the flat out attack increases and they were just like you know what Let let's start giving them percentages to just make them even more overpowered link skills infinite regeneration or infinite energy got that confused with the uh margin link the innocence twin terrors nightmare fear and face shocking speed legendary power very very good link set nightmare a 10 percent attack link fear and face two key shocking speed two key legendary power as well which in certain situations depending on whether or not you're going to run them on villains is not going to be activated that consistently but you know what it's still there and even the innocence which is a 10 percent attack link of course they would share that with lr goten and trunks for example when it comes to their particular team you know extreme agility i'm pretty certain that they aren't going to be sharing out with anyone else okay we do have a 17 actually i did not know that he had the innocence link so a lot of their links are going to be activated on their particular team, which, you know, is another reason why they are very good and ultimately why I ended up putting them, well, we, technically, ended up putting them above the LR Goku, but I don't believe that they should go any further than this. Just because they're still a, you know, pretty, be a pretty basic unit, and I believe that for the most part, they will still struggle to get the 18 key super attack unless you have the right rotations, but still very solid. Of course, they had the LR campaign quite recently. But let's move on to the next one. We have Ella Hercule and my boy Kabuki vouch for this man from the very start. And I kind of feel like I underrated him a little bit. But the thing about the Ella Hercule in my eyes is that he just doesn't have a spot on the majority of 
the uh, teams that are, you know, that are out, but he has a lot of uses, especially when it comes to Super Battle Road. For example, no LR in the game, or I'm pretty certain no unit in the game, gets a 50% defensive increase for three turns. That 50% is going to make a massive difference when it comes to his tanking capabilities, which is very good for a mode like Super Battle Road. Additionally, great chance to get a 20,000 attack increase, and you also get a 7 key. The reason why this is good is because, like I briefly mentioned, there aren't going to be too many units that this Hercule shares a lot of key links with. Of course, he does have Shattering the Limit and Innocence, which I suppose is somewhat common on a Margin Boost Saga team, depends on the setup that you are running. But on a Margin Boost Saga team, he is legit going to be taking next to no damage because that is one of the teams that gets one of the biggest defensive increases. And when you take into account the fact that he has a high defensive stat and, of course, the defensive increase that he gets from the um, 18 key super attack as well, he, he, he is pretty solid, and he's still going to be hitting hard, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know. Uh, it's a double-edged sword, really. A lot of the guys vouch for him, so I thought, you know what? I'm going to have to agree, because they used him way more than me. How even Kabuki has him at 100%, and granted, not every single unit on this particular list is going to be at 100%, but if you are taking a look at them from a 100% standpoint, I think for the most part, the entire team would look, or the entire list, we look the exact same. The leader skill is bad, but he does have a lot of offensive and defensive abilities. Granted, it is a it's by based on a chance, but it's a seventy percent chance, so it is going to be activated the majority of the times. Um, just a bit of a shame that he doesn't have better links. Now, a unit that is going to be returning in about a week, Elok Ginyu Force. There are very few people right now that have him, but my issue with the Ginyu Force is that. They are kind of outdated, which is a bit of a shame. So leader skill at the time was easily one of the best leader skills that you could have. Just because there wasn't a rainbow lead essentially that gave this much of an AM stat increase. They don't give key. Still a pretty decent card. Defensive increase for one turn. Um, of course, it's a 30% defensive increase. And the part where it kind of shows how outdated the card is. I'm hoping that they give it some sort of buff because it def you know, desperately needs it. It, the free key and a 7,777 attack increase for all allies and the free key. So there are very few units in the game that give the free key. So that instantly is very good. But when it comes to the attack increase, flat out attack increases, flat out defensive increases are just straight up bad. It's not to say that it's a detriment to the card, but because of how outdated it is in comparison to some you know other units like the the, the boo, for example, the super boo, the physical one. In comparison to that, it is kind of underwhelming. But the link set is good for the most part. Fear and phase, that's two key. Shocking speed, two key. I mean, so when it comes to linking up well with other units on that particular team, it's going to be fine. Of course, I'm talking about extreme physical. But when it comes to their passive, which was, you know, the main attraction at the time, it, it, it definitely is a bit outdated, which is a bit of a shame because it was a cool LR. But who knows, they may give it a buff in the end. But it's not to say that just, just because it's outdated, it doesn't mean that they are necessarily the worst. But it could use, uh, you know, a bit of improving. So, LR Ginyu ultimately comes in the number 6 spot. And of course, if you disagree with any of these choices, let me know in the comment section down below. Because this was a this was a team effort. Putting this together was a team effort. And now, of course, we have number 5, LR Tien and Chaozu. And the reason why they are so good, to be honest, is because they do share... A lot of links with the LR Goten, LR Goten and Trunks. Well, yeah, LR Goten and Trunks. For example, Shocking Speed, Shattering the Limit, Legendary Power. I'm, I'm sure Z Fighters is there as well. And the card works in a very interesting way because you get when a key is eight or more, you get a ten thousand defense uh, attack increase. Pardon me. When a key is eleven or more, you get a defensive increase. And when a key is fourteen or higher, you get an additional ten thousand attack and defense. So, in total, you're getting, well, if you are above 14 key, of course, or at 14 key or above, you get a 20,000 attack and defensive increase. So, that was kind of what I was talking about earlier with us kind of going back to the, you know, the whole attack and defensive ink or um, the whole flat out attack increases, pardon me. So, that's what it kind of came back to with the LRTN and Chelsea. That's a pattern I've been noticing with the majority of the three legendary rares. It's just flat out attack increases all over the place. I'm pretty certain that there is one unit on this list that has a percentage increase, maybe even two. Of course, once we get to them, I will know. 
But for the most part, the free play ones have a flat out attack increase. But yeah, because of how many links they share with Elagoten and Trunks, they are very good. And even themselves, like just as a unit by themselves, they are still decent. They will be hitting hard, but it's a shame that they don't have some of the other major attack links that, you know, the, the top two units have. But to be honest, I spoke about truth. Well, I spoke about this with Truth and Kabuki. If you don't pair, up, pair them up with Elagoten and Trunks, the Ginyu Force is potentially better. That that is definitely something to think about there. Now, in the number four spot, of course, we have the most recent legendary rare, and the reason why they are so good is because they are an incredible support unit. And this is what this particular LL Ginyu Force has above the physical one. They provide a 30% attack increase for extreme type allies for one turn with their 18 key. And they also give a 30% attack and defensive increase for extreme type allies with the passive skill and an additional 20% attack and defense to the Ginyu Force category members. Now, the worst part of the car by far is the Link set, but that aside, they do make an absolutely incredible support unit. But there isn't really that much else to say about the card, apart from the fact that it is the Ginyu Force category lead. So it's, I definitely want to say it's easily one of the best free to play teams in the game just because you have multiple units at 100%, apart from the LR, of course. But when it comes to just what they provide overall as a card, they are definitely very, very solid. Now, we are moving on to, into the top three. I don't know how long this video is. It's probably getting close to the 15-minute mark. Let's jump straight into it. And in the number three spots, we have the LR Freezer, who kind of... I kind of want to say he uh, got shafted because, like, a month later, Super Saiyan 4 Goki came out. And it's just like, oh, okay, so LR Freezer is no longer the hardest-hitting unit in the game. But he is very, very good. It's a bit of a shame that he doesn't have... A solid category for him, but once he, of course, it will, it will most likely be the Namek Saga category, right? I mean, we do have the leader right now, but leader skill for, well, the leader skill that we have right now just isn't very good. I mean, even Freezer's leader skill is pretty bad. Attack to um, all types, 7,000. Causes colossal damage, causes co uh, mega colossal damage to enemy and lowers attack and defense. I suppose it's nice to have something like that in there, but because you have units like SCR and Mega Shen on that already lower attack and defense. It's not going to be that much of a deciding factor. And it's the 18 key super attack as well. But to be fair, if you pair them up with a unit like the SCR Margin Vegeta, you're going to be able to pull that off consistently. And I would imagine that he is going to get an LR campaign eventually. And of course, once that happens, he is going to be, you know, an absolutely phenomenal unit. And when it comes to his link set, he has, the, you know, some of the major attack links and of course, some of the major key, major key links as well. Big Bad Bosses by far is the one that stands out straight away. Fear of Faith is a two key link. Legendary Power as well. Which you are going to activate with LR Broly if he decides to, pay, um, to pair the two up. Universe is the most malevolent. First for Conquest, another 15%. And of course, you have the strongest clan in space, which provides the two key. So he does have a very solid set of attack and key links. It's just a matter of are you going to be able to activate them consistently on the teams that you are running? I would imagine that. If you pair up certain units with each other on a Namek Saga team, you know, that include the LR Freezer, of course, there is a lot of potential there for, you know, a lot of linking and a lot of damage because of how certain units can, you know, share those particular links. If I actually hop over to the Namek Saga category, we have the LR Freezer here. You can actually run other freezers in combination with the LR one. And if it decides to load, that would be great. So someone like the uh, Full Power Freezer, that is a great option right there because Full Power Freezer has links like Universe is Most Malevolent. You have uh, Strongest Clan of Space, Big Bad Bosses. Bit of a shame that he doesn't have Fierce Battle, but the point is, the, um, you know, these two units share a lot of links with each other and, of course, will make a great partnership. So he comes in the number three spot. And now in the number two spot, we have probably the LR that's the hardest to obtain because you have to play the game for like a thousand days. But he does end up coming in the number two spot. And the reason why... It's just ultimately because he doesn't have the greatest link set, and that kind of drags him down. He doesn't have links like Super Saiyan. He doesn't have he don't he doesn't have Fierce Battle as well. His best linking partner is going to be the STR Ultimate Gohan, and you are not going to be able to pull off the 18 key super attack consistently. But he does have very good things about him. He gets the flat out 77% at the start of the turn, and per orb obtained, you get a 7% attack and defensive increase, and of course a 7,777 health. Per orb obtained. So he can do a lot of things, which is great. Of course, with the um, 12 key and 18 key super attack, he increases his um, own attack. But ultimately, it's just not its not enough to put him in that number one spot. He does have a very good leader skill as well. So there are a lot of good things about him. If I was to point out a flaw with the card in the way, 
it would definitely have to be the Lynx here, though. But, of course, in the number one spot, finally, we have LR Vegito Blue. Gives the free key to super types, as well as a 70% stat increase. He raises his attack and defense with every single super attack between a 12 key and a 17 key super attack. And his 18 key greatly raises his attack for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. His passive skill gives him an 80% attack and defensive increase. And he also raises his key by up to 10. So the less health you have, the greater the key boost. Link skill, Super Saiyan, Warrior Gods, Prepare for Battle, Power Bestowed by God, Fuse Fighter, Shattering the Limit, as well as a um, Legendary Power Link. Absolutely incredible Link set all around. And you can see here how it works. So at 100%, he gives himself two key. Under 80%, you get the four key and so forth. There, there was never any doubt that he was easily the best free to play LR in the game. You can get him to 100% super easily. He has the most compatibility on any team out of all these units, I believe, to be honest. He has the best category in the game, the Patara. I mean, you could argue which category is the best in the game, but the Patara provides that 170% attack increase, which is going to be absolutely insane to try out once LR Vegito Blue is finally released on the Japanese version of the game, especially at 100%. So, I am definitely looking forward to that. Of course, that was the list. We have LR Vegito Blue in first. Thousand Day Goku. LR Freezer. Uh, Tech Ginyu. Of course, of course. Tien and Chiaotzu. LR Ginyu Force. Hercule. LR Androids. LR Goku. Kid Gohan. As well as the LR Piccolo. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, as always. If you agreed. If you disagreed, let me know, as always. And again, big shout out to Truth and Kabuki for helping me put this list together. Again, if you have any issues with it, just let us know. But I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you all in the next one.